Hello, in this video I'm going to be talking about two topics. One is regularization and the other is standardization. Um, standardization is something that we're going to have to use a lot in this course and understand. Um, and it's really, relatively simple. Uh, regularization is a very complicated topic and, and might uh, require a lot of time in a, in a more advanced machine learning course. I'm not trying to get into any math regarding regularization. I'm just going to try to give the kind of simplest intuition and we aren't going to get deep into it, but I just want you to know that that's an important and, and deeper topic. So in terms of things that we've already done, um, we've been using logistic regression a lot. And a problem that it has that I haven't talked about is that it's very sensitive to scaling. And, um, and so, for example, you might have a data set and uh, there might be some numbers in it with specific units. And you might get one result if you do the classification. If you change those units, so for example, maybe you change um, miles to feet, you might get a different result, which is of course not what we want. We just care about the actual uh, kind of information, not what units somebody arbitrarily chose to use. Um, why is that? Well, it's because logistic regression is applying this technique called regularization, which tries to um, use smaller coefficients and in general, uh, not have a very large coefficient on just one of our features. Uh, you, you can imagine that if I have lots and lots of feature columns, that just by chance, maybe one of them does better on the training data than others, even if the other feature columns are kind of still somewhat useful. And so what I wouldn't want to do is just by chance choose that best one because then it won't work well later on a test data set. Uh, regularization uh, basically is providing a motivation to use multiple features and not consider one too heavily, um, even if that would do better in the short term. Um, so logistic regression does this. Linear regression, which was the first model we learned in this course, does not. Uh, but there are also things very similar to linear regression that do, such as ridge regression and lasso regression. We're not going to talk about those in 320, but they're important and used all the time. And so know that this regularization thing is a, is a big deal. Um, so what would we really like? Uh, we don't want our model to be sensitive to units. We would like to standardize it in some way so that we have the same numbers going in, regardless of what the original units were. Um, so for this example, I just made up kind of a fake scenario. Um, we're measuring some sort of quantity in the real world uh, three times. And, uh, and based on we're trying to predict what sort of category it's in. And the category will either be true or false. The underlying rule is that when the true length, which we don't know, is bigger than five, then the category is true. If it's less than five, the category is false. And so these three um, kind of noisy measurements, even though they don't tell us exactly what the true length is, they give us some information about that that can help us guess whether it's true or false. So here I have that data, that fake data I'm talking about. The Y column here is um, the category, and then I have my three measurements, X1, X2, and X3. Um, let me just talk a little bit about how I'm generating this. So under numpy.random, there are a bunch of functions that will generate random data. Um, I'm doing a normal distribution here. Um, you can sample from different distributions. If you don't know what that means, um, that's fine for this course. But basically, I'm generating a thousand random numbers with an average of four and uh, putting them in here. Uh, and so this will be an array of numbers. And then I'm saying, well, whenever that's five, greater than five, I want to have a true, otherwise I'll have a false. When I'm looking at this data frame down here, true feet does not directly go into any of these um, and then into any of these columns, it's unknown. But category does, and category is what we're trying to predict. So how are we going to try to predict if we don't know true feet? Well, I have these three other columns, which are basically just true feet uh, plus some random noise. So if I look at it down here, let me look at this first one. All three measurements were less than five. So it makes a lot of sense that I'll predict that uh, the Y is less than, than five. Um, maybe I can uh, uh, even look at some more cases here. I wonder if um, uh, I can see where it's true. Let me do that. So I can see some other cases here where it's true, right? All In this case, all the measurements were greater than five. Uh, so I say it's true. This is kind of a more interesting example. Um, this number is very large, right? One measurement was like almost seven. And even though the other two measurements were less than five, uh, this was enough of a signal that uh, the model decided it's true. Uh, well, it's true overall. And, and so hopefully the model will decide the same. Okay, so that's the data we're working with. And let's see if we can um, uh, train a model to try to uh, predict this. So I'm gonna create a model and I'm gonna use a linear or logistic regression model. And uh, I'm gonna fit it to my data. And so I'm gonna have some X and some Ys. For my Ys, I'm just gonna pull that Y column from my training data. And for my X, 
I want to pass in a list of all my um, columns that contain features. So x1, x2, and x3. And, um, and I'm going to be using these again, so I'm actually just going to put this in a variable called x columns. And then I don't have to keep typing that whole long thing every time. And so I fit it, and that's great. And so pretty soon I'm going to look at the coefficients for this model, but before that I just want to, um, as an aside, see what accuracy it has. If I want to see the accuracy of a model, um, I can just say, it's a fit I want to score. And then to be realistic, I should um, score it on data that I haven't seen before instead of the thing I trained it on. Right, so this is kind of a better test. And I see that it has 89% uh, accuracy. Uh, is that good? 89% seems high that we would be right that often. But let me show you why it's not necessarily. If I look at this Y column, I see it's almost always false. And indeed, if I say value counts, I can see it's only true um, less than 20% of the time. And I can actually just divide this by the length of test to see that. And so what this means is that even if I had a very naive model that just always has false, I would be getting 81% accuracy. 89% is better, but in that context, it's not so amazing um, just given that there's so much skew in that column. Okay, so after I look at the um, accuracy of a model, the next thing I'll often want to look at are my coefficients, and I like to plot those in some way. Oh, my uh, model coefficients. And I see those are right here, and, um, and I'd like to have some sort of bar plot. So I know that these things are paired up with these x columns, right? So this is the coefficient uh, for x1, so on and so forth. And so I, the way I'll often make such a bar plot is I'll say pd.series, and then I will have my uh, y values, and then I'll have index equals x values dot plot dot bar. So on uh, the x values, I'm going to use those column names, and then I'm going to put the coefficients uh, to basically have the quantities that are going to go to the y-axis. And it's complaining that the length of one of these things is, is, is um, 1 when it was supposed to be 3. And so uh, x columns, that's pretty simple there. But if I look at this, uh, this array right here, what do I see? I see there's um, it's really a two-dimensional thing. Uh, I can flatten it into a one-dimensional array with three numbers. Or if I say negative 1, it'll make it one-dimensional, but it'll make it um, you know, it'll, it doesn't matter how many numbers I have, it'll figure it out. So I'm going to put that here now, and now I get this plot. And this is interesting, right? I was talking about how maybe sometimes um, just by chance we focus more on one column than another, and that happened here, right? Uh, x1, x2, and x3 were all equally noisy, but it just so happens that um, based on the training data, the model thinks that x1 is, is more um, kind of more uh, uh, useful, right? That was just by chance. Right? And so you can imagine a worse scenario where it picks one column that it really likes and ignores all these other ones that have good information in it. And so the model will try to avoid doing that. Regularization means that we'll try not to put too much weight on just one uh, factor. We'll try to spread it out a little bit. And, um, and, and then if you took it to an extreme, you might imagine that uh, I could have a model where I just um, look at my intercept. Right, my intercept is, uh, you can imagine that being like the average, and the model could just predict that, and all my coefficients could be zero. Um, in that case, well, we always just predict the same thing, um, and we want to have this, um, this problem. I guess we'd have another problem that just wouldn't be very accurate. Okay, so I have that. And so let me head back here, and I'm going to re randomly generate this data, but this time I'm just going to change the units on, on this column, and I'm going to change the units to be miles. And so there's 5,280. Uh, uh, feet in a mile. So I'm just making a comment here. This is um, feet to uh, miles like that. And so I have the same kind of data, uh, just different units. So I might hope that my model won't do anything that differently. And so I'm going to run this again. And I see that not too much has changed here. And then I want to think about what's going to happen when I rerun this. So in this x2 column, um, the, the numbers are all much smaller now. Uh, because it's in miles. Um, and so I might expect that to use this, I might have a bigger coefficient on x2 if I wanted it to be just like before. It turns out when I run it, I actually see the opposite. Um, it's adverse to having such large coefficients on one column uh, because of that regularization thing I talked about. So it actually decides, hey, I'm just going to ignore um, x2 entirely. I have to put a bigger or a bigger weight on that than I'm comfortable doing have it be a factor. So I, I just lost some information there. So I'm not using these two columns anymore. Now, of course, that's silly, right? 
Uh, putting a bigger coefficient on it isn't really weighting it more, it's just canceling out the fact that I have different units on it. And so there's different ways to solve this. One is that I could just um, insist that I have the same units for everything. Other way I could do it is I could try to um, kind of make this a little more uniform in some way. And so that's what I'm going to do here. Um, I'm going to head back here and uh, let, me, um, let me take my training data and my, um, actually, where do I want to do this? I take these X columns even sooner. Uh, actually, no, that's fine. I'm going to leave that there. So I'm going to take my training data and um, I want to take a slice of it and I want to get all the rows and I want to get columns X1 through uh, X2. And so this is just my features now. Well, through X3, sorry. These are just my features. And I want to ha somehow um, standardize it so that uh, they all have roughly the same scale. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this out into uh, this X uh, variable right here. And, um, and there's going to be two things I'm going to do. One is that I'm going to take the mean of each, uh, of each column, just like that. And I'm going to subtract these numbers off of each column. So I'm going to say that. And so now all of these columns are centered at zero, right? After I subtract away the mean, the average of every column is zero. It turns out that uh, that is also helpful for logistic regression to run faster. I'm not going to get into de details about why. But that's useful. And then more importantly, I want them to be on the same scale. And so, oops, what happened there? Um, I jumped onto a new column or to a new cell. Um, and so if I look at this, that's a standard deviation of each column. And, and, and if I have larger numbers, while well, the standard deviation will be higher. And so standardization, the real key part is that I'm dividing all of this by that standard deviation. And if I do that, I may get a bunch of small numbers that have roughly the same scale. So after I've done this, all of them will have the same average, zero, and then the same standard deviation of one. And so this would be a better um, X data. And I can actually put this back in to my training data like this. So I'm going to say this equals my new X data. So I make a note here, I'm going to say manually standardize the data. And so after I do that, I run all of this stuff again. And now I see that, um, great, uh, X2 is back in play, even though I have different units. It's not getting obsessed with these other columns uh, just based on the units. So this was a good thing to do, okay? That's what standardization is. Now, it turns out that, um, that to do this right, I have to calculate this mean and standard de deviation on the training data, but then I have to use that same mean and uh, standard deviation on the test data. I can't retake the mean on the test data. And so the methodolog methodology of this gets a little bit complicated. And so generally we won't do this. Generally we'll have um, sklearn uh, do that for us. And, and, and so it turns out that there's a, a, um, a pre-processing step called standardization, and we're going to use that instead of manually doing this. So I'm going to head back here. And uh, you can see I've already imported my standard scalar. And so I'm going to run this here. And this is skipping now. Um, for my model, right, I'll just actually leave this for now, and that'll be my bad model. What I'll do is I'll uh, create a new model, which will be a pipeline model. And in that pipeline model, I want to have a standard scalar followed by a logistic regression. Just like that. And this one, so I may have to actually create them like that. Um, I have to give them names, right? So I'm going to uh, pass tuples here. So I'm going to call that a uh, standard scalar. Okay, I have to put Thomas to separate these things. And then, uh, and then maybe I'll call this logistic regression uh, like that. And so this is my new model. And then it turns out all this stuff I was doing before of like fitting, for example, uh, it can work the same way, right? I can fit just like I did before because I this new one also fit and so I can do that I could also score it like I did before um, let me score it now and I get something very similar and then what's going to be interesting is that when I actually do this when I actually try to get this bar plot um, it should show that it's back in play right even though uh, the non-standardized version is ignoring x2 now this version should show it so I'm going to run this and there's going to be a small error here and the problem is that pipeline doesn't have coefficients Right? This pipeline as a whole uh, doesn't have coefficients, but the logistic regression inside of it does have coefficients. And so how can I get to that? It turns out that any um, pipeline 
works like a dictionary and I can um, I can for example I can copy these names and use that like a key and so that would get me my standard scalar from the beginning or I could pass in this key and that would get me a logistic um, uh, my logistic regression stage of it and so from that then I could actually see well what are the coefficients involved there and I would um, um, I would paste this here instead of what I originally had and so now I can see that when I have the standardization in play as a transformer before my estimator it'll automatically do that and, and then it'll do the right things as well if I do my fitting here it'll calculate that mean and the standard deviation when I do scoring it's just going to use the same uh, mean and standard deviation from before it would not look at that for the test because that would be kind of a methodological um, mistake. So we're going to be generally doing this uh, whenever we have a logistic regression unless we have some very special scenario um, for example that uh, the data has already been standardized.